So in this example, it is generally believed that a particular genetic defect is carried by 10% of people. A new and simple test becomes available to determine whether somebody is a carrier of the defect using a blood specimen. As part of a research project, 100 hospitals are asked to carry out this test anonymously on the next 30 blood samples they take. The results are as follows. So you've got the number of positive tests and their frequencies. Do these figures support the model that 10% of people carry this defect independently of any other condition at the 5% significance level? Now the difference between this example and the previous example is that in this example we're given the probability p. It's 10%. So we've got the distribution. Okay. Now we've got to be a little bit careful because what, um, what are we using here for n? Be careful because it's not 7. Remember this is 7 plus. This table should be going up to 30. Okay? So n is 30 and p is 0.1. Okay. So, um, Let's build up our table then. So we've got number, and we've got the observed frequency, and we need the expected frequencies. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven plus. So the observed frequency is 11, 29, 26, 20, 9, 3, 1, 1. Right, OK, so I need the uh, binomial probability and then need to multiply it by 100. So I'm going to use the formula. So we've got 30 NCR 0 to start off with, times by the probability of success, which is 0 0.1 to the power of 0, times by the probability of failure, 0 0.9 to the power of uh, 30. And then I'm going to times that by 100. So we get 4.2391. Right, let's change it over to 1. And that would be 14.1304. Right, quite small. My table's quite small. Uh, right, let's change it over to 2. Right, that's 22.7656. Right, let's change it over to 3. So 23.6088. Right, change it to 4. Seventeen point seven zero six six. Right, let's change it to 5. Ten point two three zero five. Let's change it to six. Four point seven three six three. <clears throat> now the next one is seven plus, so we need to find the probability of x being greater than or equal to seven. OK, so I need probability of x being greater than or equal to 7, and I need to times that by 100. So because I'm using the class whiz, I'm going to have to do one take away the probability of x being less than or equal to 6. OK, so menu number 7. I need binomial CD. We'll change the x value to 6. N is 30, P is 0 0.1. Right, 
So that's 0.974173213. So 1, take away 0 0.9741732113 times by 100, and we get 2.5827. Okay. Right. Next thing to look out for, small expected frequencies. So we've got three values here that are under five. So I'm going to need to combine those two groups and those two. So 4.2391 plus 14.1304. Now that's 18.3695. So 4.7363 plus 2.5827. Okay, so that's 7.319. Okay. Right, now the observed take away the expected squared divided by the expected. Okay. So we're combining these observed, so that's 40. Take away 18.3695 squared, divided by 18.3695, and we get 25.470. It's quite large. Right, next one. 26, take away 22.7656 squared, divided by 22.7656. Right, that one's quite small. 0 0.459, so 460. Right, next one. 20, take away 23.6088 squared, divided by 23.6088. 0 0.552. Right, next one. 9, take away 17.7066 squared divided by 17.7066 so that's 4.281 then we've got 3 take away 10.2305 squared divided by 10.2305 so 5.110 and then our last one uh, the observed here is 2 so 2 take away 7.319 squared divided by 7.319. So 3.866. So add all those together. 25.470 plus 0 0.460 plus 0.552 plus 4.281 plus 5.110 plus 3.866 and we get 39.739. Okay, so the null hypothesis, we could say the model that 10% of people carry the defect is appropriate and the alternative the model that 10% of people carry the defect is not appropriate. Okay, right, so now new, the number of degrees of freedom. Right, so we started off with uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight columns, but we reduced that down to six because we combined columns. So we ended up with six columns that we were working with. We didn't need to estimate a parameter, so I don't need to take away anything there, 
but we do need to take away one as we always do. So we're down to five degrees of freedom at the 5% significance level. The critical value is, okay, so on page 13 of the OCR MEI formula booklet, we're at a 5% significance level with new being 5, that's 11.07. Well, 39.739 is much larger. So 39.739 is greater than 11.07. So the result is significant. So we reject H0. So there is evidence suggest that the model um, that the model that ten percent of people carry the defect is not appropriate.